It turns out that in order for us to solve each of the four parts of this question, it's going to be helpful to calculate the acceleration of the man for each of the four parts of the question. So we've broken the problem up into those four parts. We can begin with part one before the elevator even starts to move. Now, of course, when the elevator is at rest, the elevator is not accelerating. So the acceleration in that vertical y direction would equal zero meters per second squared. We move on to part two of the problem, and during that part, the elevator accelerates from rest and reaches a maximum speed of 1.2 meters per second in 0.8 seconds. We can summarize the data as follows. The initial velocity of the elevator would be zero meters per second. The final velocity was stated as 1.2 meters per second, and then there is a time interval of 0.8 seconds. And from those data, we can easily calculate the acceleration of the elevator. We know the following equation from one-dimensional kinematics. We can plug in the data without the units just for the sake of clarity. And what we're going to do is algebraically solve for this acceleration. The zero here is negligible, so really all we have to do is divide both sides of this equation by the 0.8. This cancels the 0.8 on the right-hand side, and when we do this, we have 1.5 meters per second squared. This will be the acceleration in that vertical y direction for part two of the problem. In the third part of the question, the question notes that the elevator is traveling with a constant speed, and any object traveling at constant speed is not accelerating, so the acceleration in the y direction is once again zero meters per second squared. Finally, there is a negative acceleration and the elevator will come to rest. And this is all going to take place in one and a half seconds. So let's list some of the data there. In this case, the initial velocity was that maximum velocity that it had attained earlier. So it's the 1.2 meters per second. The final velocity would be zero meters per second because again, the elevator comes to rest. The time interval was the one and a half seconds, and then the acceleration will be calculated exactly as we did it earlier. So there is that same equation. We will plug in the data, and then we're going to solve for the acceleration. Same idea, but this time we have to subtract the 1.2 from both sides of the equation. That'll cancel it out on the right-hand side, and then we end up dividing both sides by the 1.5. And when we do that, That'll cancel it out on the right-hand side. We end up with a negative acceleration, negative 0.8 meters per second squared. The next thing we'll need to do is examine the free body diagram in order to figure out what the spring scale reads. So let's take a look at the free body diagram to the man standing in the elevator. So there are two primary forces acting here. We have the downward force of gravity, which we can represent as the mass of the man times g. And then we have this upward force that the spring scale is exerting on the man. Remember, the man is standing on the spring scale. The spring scale, therefore, is exerting an upward force on him. And in fact, it is that upward force that will turn out to be the reading on the spring scale. So in other words, this normal force that we've labeled it in the diagram is the spring scale force registered on that spring scale. So we can see then that we can apply Newton's second law to the man in this free body diagram. We know that the net force in the y direction would equal the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Let us assume that the upward direction is positive and the downward direction is negative, and therefore we have the positive normal force added to the negative gravitational force. So we'll just subtract the gravitational force, and then this will equal the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. It will be useful to solve this equation for that normal force, since that is what each part of the question is asking for. So we just add mg to both sides, and we can see that that normal force, which again is the spring scale force, is equal to the mass times the acceleration, and then plus the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. We could actually factor out the man's mass just to make our calculations a little easier. So we have the mass of the man multiplied by the sum of the acceleration of the elevator plus the gravitational constant. And we can now just sort of take all the data for each of the four parts of the question and just plug in. So for instance, in part A, we remember that the acceleration in the y direction was zero, so we would have the following. 
And after plugging in the known values, we will then just calculate the normal force or the spring scale force to be approximately 706 newtons. So that is the correct answer to part A. In part B, we're going to do a very similar computation, except for the acceleration in the y direction. Remember that we had calculated that in part two of this problem to be 1.5 meters per second squared. And this turns out to equal around 814 newtons. In part C, once again, the acceleration was zero, just like it was in part A. So that normal force will be 706 newtons. And then in part D, we'll plug in that negative acceleration from earlier. And we end up with a spring scale force of approximately 648 newtons. And so we have all four correct answers to this problem.